Jordan subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan subjective. Jordan subjective perspective. <laughs> oh, we're rolling. <laughs> yeah, we're going. How you doing, Grace? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Just loving the sensation of these headphones. Like I was saying, I'm just I'm still not like fully used to it, but. From my experience, like over time, we'll we'll definitely like fall into the rhythm. So it's so weird because I heard you guys like talking, and now it's you're so much louder because I just kept these on the whole time. Like I'm not even talking loud whatsoever, and I'm just like in your ear. It's pretty cool. I like it. It's a new experience. Yeah, for sure. Just to sit across the table from somebody and have a completely new experience just because of technology. I enjoy it. First world. Is that a gang sign, crossing peace signs like that? Do you ever worry about that, just doing, like, random things? Like, I don't know, if you were to, like, do that. that, That's probably a gang sign somewhere. It's Springfield. I'm not worried about it. Fair enough. (laughs) I feel like that's why you should worry about it, though. Because it's Springfield. Shoulder shrug. Well. Shoulder shrug, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, do you just want to hop into it? Yeah, sure. Cool. So, I, I first starting question, as I told you before the podcast, which, by the way, you were the first person I've ever carried down the stairs to get here, which is fucking cool. That's Thanks yeah, for you, not dropping me. I appreciate it. I thought about it. Thought about it. I it's thought happened. about it. It's happened before. It'll happen again. <laughs> it's the best mentality to take. What, what about a fireman carry somebody? Like, Do people ever do that? That's like the most efficient way to carry a human being. It is the most uncomfortable thing on the entire planet. For you? Yes. Okay. See, I think that's a lack of consideration for the other party because it's easier for them. <laughs> Another shoulder shrug. <laughs> Another shoulder shrug, yeah. But um, no, because I sit there and I'll smack my... Because I've tried this. Um... I actually ended up hitting my head on his back, like, super hard, and I didn't know, but he had, um, he'd been playing rugby, and he had, like, a huge bruise on his back, and my head just smacked right into it, and he was like, oh "Oh my god, he was like, I was like, I'm sorry, and he was like, I'm, he's like, I'm finding a different way to carry you, I can't do this up every single stair I hit, Uh and I was like, I was like, do you want to just, like, like you want to just piggyback it and he was like sure let's try that and it worked out fine but he he dropped you because of that no he almost dropped me okay no have you been dropped downstairs before (laughs) yeah oh wow it like how many flights well it was more of like a gradual decline to the ground because i was like you're going to drop me and he was like no i'm not i'm like just just like at the bottom of the stairs no like in the middle Oh. It was like like a flight of stairs like that. It was But you didn't like roll down the stairs. No. Okay. I just sat on a step and said, Go get somebody stronger than you and he was like, Okay. And he did. What a belittling statement. Go get somebody stronger than you, peasant. Peasant. Go get somebody stronger than you, you fucking pussy. That's that's just those are strong words. I like that. I mean it's like implied. I was like, Well, I was also sober and annoyed. I was like, just go, because he was like, I can carry you. I was like, This isn't you a pride sure? thing, buddy. I was like, are you sure? And he was like, yeah, I can do it. I was like, okay. You, your uh, well-being and should not be like tested to his capabilities. Just that it, it shouldn't become a challenge if he can get you up those stairs or not, you know? Oh, my gosh. That reminds <laughs> me. Okay, so these guys carried me in, like, me and my chair. This was my freshman year. And I was sitting there and I was like, oh, you guys can just like carry me. You don't got to make a big deal out of it. And they go, oh, we're going to make a big deal out of it. It was like two football players. They took my chair, picked it up and set it on their shoulders. So these two guys who are like six feet plus have the bottom of my wheelchair on top of them. Like, Wait, are it- Are your wheels rested on their shoulders? So you're rotating? No, the the wheels were locked. Okay, okay, absolutely. But no, they stuck me on their shoulders and just started carrying me 
around and I went can, can I go inside and I went no it's kind of fun I was like okay do you feel like a queen no I was terrified the entire time I thought they were gonna drop me it's a lot of trust that was too much trust that was before I learned how to say um fuck no you are not doing that I don't was like, touch me don't get any ideas I was like because I was like 18 so and it was like probably well it was not my first college party by any long shot but I was sitting there and they were like they were like no we're just gonna carry you a different way and I went okay not thinking they were gonna do that and uh-huh. then they did that and I was like <clears throat> I'm like just just play it cool you're fine if they drop you this is really high but like and you're trusting drunk dudes too you know how many drunk dudes I've had to trust over the years to get me in and out of places? I'm going to answer that question. Too many. Too many. Too many. But wow. it's okay. I couldn't imagine like trusting a stranger that much to the level of, hey, I know I just met you, but could you like carry me up this flight of stairs? That'd be just super appreciated. I mean, my standards used to be, like, I need, like, the sober monitor that was here. I need this person to, like, not have drink at all, To Can you walk straight? How many fingers am I holding up? Two? Mm-hmm. You're good. Let's go. <laughs> That's your only test? That's your only test of trust, of competence, to be able to carry you up the stairs. How many fingers am I holding up? And can you walk straight? And and you're probably analyzing him. It's like, okay, he's on the skinnier side. I'm going to maybe ask that bigger guy. So you're judging them on, like, how, how I look strong at they are as well. Probably how strong they are. Usually I can tell how drunk a dude is and, like, how they're going to carry me. Because piggyback, it's really hard to drop somebody. You should be a cop. Become a cop. You could be done. Just based off visual cues, be it be able to figure out if somebody's drinking and driving or not. I mean, I guess I could. Just like super meticulous with micro gestures of whether or not somebody's intoxicated. Well, I mean, reading people has always been easy. Just in general. Just throughout life? Yeah. Okay, I would agree with that. It's like girls are better at that, by the way. Really? Girls are definitely better at reading people. Well, it's because it's like the oh, we, we were even talking about this earlier. You were like, "Oh, well, girls like overanalyze this," and I was like, "That sounds right, yeah." But no, it's like picking up on body language because that's like the one thing that, like, you can be conscious of it, but you can't always control it if you're not thinking about it all the time. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's. Is that something you're thinking about right now? Yeah, I would say I'm always analyzing it to some degree, but it's 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 been a learned thing. Like I wasn't always that way. I feel like I've been become more observant over time. But before, I was probably completely oblivious. To be completely honest with you, and my minor is communication, so I've gotten better at like subtle gestures and whatnot. Yeah, there you go. But also, I still don't feel like I'm as good as most girls. I could be wrong about that, but that's just how I feel. Well, like, I don't know. I feel like everything's on a scale with that. Like, not every girl is great at reading cues. And, like, not every guy is shit at it. Uh Uh-huh. Because, like, well, I don't know. I feel like with, like, with me, I can't tell, like, I can't always tell if a guy's, like, flirting with me or not. Because I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't know. He's just being nice. Why is that, you think? Why is that they that women are able to feel? You think they're just more like feelers? They're more intuitive. They're more like in touch with their emotions. They're more in touch with other people's emotions. More receptive to that. I don't know. I mean, for me, I've always had really good intuition. Mm-hmm. But I second guess it a lot too. But as I've gotten older, I don't. So it's almost like the, uh, I don't know, like the intuitive trait like if you're an intuitive person it's more attributed to the feminine for whatever reason i mean i don't know i made my male sims intuitive wait what did you just say my male sims so like because you could pick that as like a little male sims what's that did you ever play the sims the 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 video what? game 
I've heard of it. I don't know what it is. What is it? Is it like Roller Coaster Tycoon? Like you're creating like a hypothetical reality kind of? I've never played Sims. I've never played Sims. It's like you can have like these little people uh-huh. and then you like pick their top five. You can like pick what they look like and you can like pick their top five traits. Ooh. And then like you'll go on there and you'll have like little babies and then you get to pick like it's like you'll get to pick one trait. This was Sims 3. You'll get to pick like one trait for the baby and then it picks one trait for the baby. Okay. So then, like you don't entirely have control over like what the kids like. It was fun. I loved playing Sims so, like, when I was you, a kid. So you choose certain actions and the outcomes determine based on like a simulation of the game almost? Yeah, kind of. That's why it's called Sims. It's a simulation. Uh, Which I never put that together until right now and I played it <laughs> like all through elementary and middle school. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I'm getting the premise now. No, that was like the closest thing I was to like a gamer girl growing up. People mm-hmm. are like, oh, do you play video games? I'm like, I play Sims. I remember whenever I would see people back, I mean, this is like a young age, but I'd see people playing like Grand Theft Auto and I'm like, that person's going to grow up and he's going to have a really fucked up life and he's going to be a bad person and he's on the rougher side of human beings and whatnot. But um, I don't know. I just feel like uh, I I would just kind of judge people for playing Grand Theft Auto and then I played it and I'm like, oh, this is fucking fun and I I have no desire to go rob people. First time I shoot up police and yeah right. First time I played it, I stole an airplane. That's impressive. That's immediate five stars. Like, I don't know what that means. Like five stars, like um, the police are chasing you. Like it, it pretty much the amount of stars determines like how heavy the chase is going to be for you. Oh yeah, it was really fun. We stole. It was me and then like she was like my little sister growing up. She and I were like playing it, and she was like, "Let's go steal." I was like, okay, let's do it. So we went and we stole an airplane and we were trying to like fly it. The police almost caught us and we finally like got it to take off. And we were like, wee. The amount of shit you can do in those games is so fun. It's so That's fun. how Stardew Valley is though. I don't even know if that is either. It's like, I would describe it as a cross between Sims and Harvest Moon. Okay. really fun it's like it's like okay so as i'm explaining the premise it sounds like really ridiculous your grandpa dies and you go and run his farm that's it that's it you run the farm wow what a great fucking game and there's like people in town i can't wait to buy it that's the only game i have well i have skyrim but i haven't touched it that's it that's it you just your grandpa dies so it starts out with a tragedy. You have to cope with the, you have to emotionally cope with the loss of your grandfather, and then it just sends you into this game. Yeah. How do you not spend the rest of the game just crying? How do you not just every every turn you turn around? And Maybe you, see, you like you see like an old barn, and you're like, "Wow, that's where Grandpa used to pick me up and." Tell me he loved me and whatnot, and then maybe you didn't know. Dead. Maybe you didn't know Grandpa existed. Like, I think it's a surprise that you have a grandpa. I don't remember. I haven't like so you just, started you just, a new game in a while. Oh, like that awkward moment in life whenever you're like that that awkward moment that I I have a grandpa th- that suddenly just exists and then he dies a few minutes later. Yeah. That sure. awkward moment. That awkward moment. Highly relatable. But it's like really fun and okay, this is going to sound like really bizarre but like i'm not an outdoorsy person Mm -hmm. i never have been but now i just kind of like now i'm really not and like you can be an outdoorsy person and be in a wheelchair i just don't put in the effort to do it right like my like definition of an outdoorsy activity is sipping blue hurricane by the pool that's like the only outdoor activity I do. Or is maybe like a bonfire in somebody's backyard. Or yeah. Something. Like day drinking is my favorite outdoor activity. It's probably that's probably a good thing for your situation, you know? Like if you if you're well, like, always wanting to be outside and like you want to go hiking, it's like eh, Oh no, there's wheelchairs for that. Really? Oh, they're forty thousand dollars. 
there's wheelchairs for that. See, and like if you really wanted to do that, then you would end up spending the money just to do so, and then like I know a guy who's doing that like right now. He has MS. He has really advanced ALS. Yeah, he has really advanced ALS. It's my teacher from high school's husband, and he has like this super awesome like camo wheelchair because they've always done stuff outside and they like breed hunting labs so he just he looks like a like the buddha just floating he looks like aladdin just floating on his butt oh ha! because ha. it's camo it's camo ha 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 ha, ha, ha. ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> but no there's like there are <laughs> wheelchairs for that and like there's but you wheel- can get up like a, a tall hill you're yeah. telling me you can climb up like i've i've gone hiking on some very tall hills with like rocks and divots like very defined well, like i mean i don't know what they what they do but like you could go hunting in the ozarks in it for for sure like i think bass pro even sells them mm. don't i i don't know if bass pro sells them or not but i wouldn't be surprised if they did i'm somebody i'm all about like you do you and like don't let any limitations but like Right. You know, don't don't imagine any limitations. You can do anything you set your mind to. Who am I gonna who am I to tell you that you can't do something? I but, went kind of hiking once. I mean, there's some like really steep hills and I'm just I, I'm just I think there are human limitations that you can't push yourself. No, physics. There is physics involved. Well, okay. Well physics, but also just like I don't think anybody's that strong to where That happened get to me in New York. Three miles of massive terrain of just pushing with your arms solely like you got to be really strong well, not just I mean, strong but you got to have endurance with your arms too i mean there's i met her name's tatiana i met her Bust down, tatiana. oh my god i hate you <laughs> but um i met her and she's does like the paralympics and she does like basically like iron mans and like triathlons my fucking hero That's in a wheelchair awesome. there's like special wheelchairs for running wow i wish i had one that would be amazing that's awesome. i would die for that that'd be so cool but i'm i'm a broke bitch so <laughs> no but i mean i like having a roof over my head and paying rent i'm kind of imagining yeah yeah right right i'm kind of imagining almost like a swimming stroke with like if you were going to sprint competitively in a wheelchair then, like, you'd, like, send it and then maybe even do, like, a full rotation, come back around, send it again. And you're just doing, like, windmills. And then every time you come down on the down rotation, you just fucking send it. I mean, you're not entirely wrong on, like, how you're supposed, like, how you're, I don't do it like this. How you're, that's also why I have shoulder problems, though. How you're supposed to. Uh-huh. Like how every physical therapist has told me, and I was like, "This isn't conducive. I don't like it. I don't get anywhere fast enough." Because it's like you it's go like a slower method. Yeah, in my opinion, there's mm. people who do it right, but I don't. I don't do a lot of things right that I'm supposed to, though. I'm not supposed to run any five Ks because of my shoulders, and I do two a year. So, like, oh, look at you! That's awesome. It's really, I do it with like a nonprofit, so that's why I do it. It's not that it's the 5K necessarily, it's what the 5K is for. Oh, good for you. What's it for? Girls on the Run. What's that? It is, oh my God, I can talk about this all day. So, um, girls are always on the run for me, so I can, I can relate. You can relate. I will donate to that cause. I'll donate. Girls just run as far as away as they can get from me. So basically and never what it come back. And never come back. <laughs> what it is, it's girls, because there's girls on the run and heart and soul. Girls on the run is third through fifth grade, and it teaches girls how to be like healthy physically and mentally, emotionally. And then um so like, okay. I've coached quite a few seasons i just didn't do it in the spring because i was taking is it like a life coach like a life coach for a younger woman no it's like you help them train to run a 5k at the end of like the program okay but you're like, like there's some mental exercises some so it's like we'll talk about like 
not because there's not like good and bad emotions there's comfortable and uncomfortable so we'll talk about that we'll talk about like what makes a good friend and then it's kind of so like for warm-up we'll say will this make or break or test a friendship and then you like give them a scenario and then there's like three cones and then they like run to a different cone if they say this would break a friendship this would make a friendship or this would test a friendship so it's kind of getting them to like think about that and then sometimes like relationship will, building kind of yeah can be so it's like how to spot a good friend versus a bad friend and then how to eat healthy how to like think about your emotions and stuff like that so it's really fun and I really like it and I'm kind of glad I took a semester off from it because I'm gonna start back with it in the fall and I'm really excited about it but at the end of the year like at the end of the like season which is a 10-week season so once a semester pretty much there's a 5k so girls on the run does the bass pro 5k and then the Gamma Phi Beta at Missouri State runs the 5K in the spring because that's their national philanthropy. Okay. So it's really fun. I like it. Those are like the two 5Ks I do a year. And you have a running buddy. So you do the 5K with one of the girls. Oh, that's cool. So that's always really fun. There's like some of my friends who their PR for a 5K has been that 5K because they've had a girl that's a runner who's a third grader, who's tiny and fast, and they finish a 5K in 30 minutes. Third graders can run that quick. Yes. Wow. I've had third grade girls who their PR for a 5K is like, I'm like, you need to go run cross country because they will give you money to do this in college. Wait, what, what is a 5K? How many miles is that? 3.2. 3.2, and they're doing it in 30 minutes? Yes. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of impressive for a third grader. For a third, like for a... Very, very small. I don't know what, like, I don't know what's good and what's not. Like, for that age group. That's good. Really? That's, yeah. That's I think I was good. running, like, seven-minute miles in sixth grade. So, that's pr- that's probably pretty damn good. Then, for a female running, for three miles total, running ten-minute miles, that's that's pretty solid. For a little, little baby. Yeah. Little girl. But some of my girls, I had one girl who did a 25-minute 5K, and I was like, hey. Oh, wow. I was like, hey. That's how high school juniors do? Really? I was like, well, I mean, that's a little, I don't know. I'm trying to think, because I did cross country my freshman year of high school, and I'm trying to think of how fast some of the girls ran. But I can't think of it. That was a really long time ago. But I was like, hey, do a sport where you run, because you're good at it. And she was like, okay. I remember seeing online one time, there's this dude who could run, like, a low five-minute mile, and he was in, like, sixth grade. He was trying to to play pro basketball, and he had, like, some – I I don't – he had some biological advantage to where his lung capacity was larger than other people's. Let's say as somebody who's got some pretty fucking hardcore asthma, I'd kill for that. Yeah, right. You have asthma? Well, okay, I had asthma growing up as a kid, and it was exercise-induced. Then I had my spinal cord injury, and it affected my diaphragm. So right whenever I was, like, in the hospital at first, I would talk for too long, and I would get, like, super winded. And, like, now sometimes I'll, like, I'll, like, be doing something, and I sit there, and I'm like... (sighs) Mm. And it's like something that's not exercise at uh-huh. all. But I'm like, okay, well, I guess it's what exercise-induced asthma means now. Which is fine. Mm. Am I boring you? Oh, my God. That was the most boring story. Can we move on? Uh, yes. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That was a, that was a very sudden yawn. But no, I want to I want to talk to you about what's how did you get your injury? Because this is news to me. I've known you for what like nine months now, and I still don't know why. I know. Okay, so I don't know. People are like super weird about asking about it, and I mean, this isn't me speaking for everybody in a I'm gonna, wheelchair. I'm gonna beat around the bush. Like, yes. how was your? So like, okay, there's like your okay. So there, there's not like a normal chair sitting underneath you. Like, yeah. I don't know if you knew this, but yours has wheels on it. Oh my god! No shit. It does. So like if you want to look down, you 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 can just trust me. I need to, 
I need to check. Check. You can check. Okay. Oh, there they are. Yep. That was a, that was a quick glance. That was probably a lot of trust in me. So thank you for that. Uh, but no, no. I um, yeah. So there, you're sitting on a chair of wheels, and I was just, I was, I don't know how to ask this, but uh, how? I had something called a cavernous angioma. It's a knot of blood vessels. So like. You like rap that. You've gotten good at saying that, haven't you? Oh my god. Yeah. Do you feel smarter when you say that? I mean, no, it's just my life. Okay. I uh, I would feel smarter if I said it. That's why I asked. I mean, maybe at first I did. I was like this big long drawn out medical term. But basically it exploded. That's like the best way I can explain it. It just mm. I had a concussion from playing basketball. And I went outside in January, and it's southern Missouri in January. It's cold. So I went outside, got in the car, went inside, went tanning, went back outside, got back inside the car. Does tanning heat up your body temperature, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you go in a little. So you're switching your you body temperature. You go in a bed of light. Up. Oh, it's just, it's going up and down, up and down. Okay. So um, then I'm in the car, and it just, like, basically exploded and i tried to get out of the car when i got home and i like collapsed on my garage floor and what was it exactly that exploded it's a cavernous angioma so it's a knot of blood vessels and mine was actually c5 c6 so it's all the way up here so my technical diagnosis is extreme like is high functioning quadriplegic i just happen to have an incomplete injury versus a complete injury, which is like a super common misconception. You see somebody in a wheelchair that's using their arms and they go, you go, oh, that's a paraplegic. Not always. Interesting. Yeah. It's very like. So how did that cause the result, the end result of being in a wheelchair? Basically your spinal cord swells uh -huh. and then it like just on your spinal column. So it's like. It's like if you're wearing a pair of shoes that are too small and you're like trying to squeeze your feet into these shoes and you're like, why don't these shoes fit me? Like that is your spinal cord is swelling and uh -huh. hitting your spinal column. So it causes spinal Was it extremely bruising. uncomfortable? Oh, it was like the worst pain I've ever been uh. in. Like fire, like fire, just nerve pain. Down, which I still have nerve pain. I mean, it's not that big of a, it's not that big of a deal, mm. but... It was just this like fire coursing down my entire right arm. Mm. So that was a fun time. And then I went to the hospital and they told me, they were like, we're going to have to take you to the OR. And I went, what's that? Which OR is operating room. For Grey's Anatomy listeners, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but um, they said, "What?" I was like, what are you talking about? And they went operating room. We have, they, they literally looked at me and they go, we have to cut open your spinal column. And I just went and then started sobbing. Oh, wow. Because like 14, when I got, whenever I got there, I looked at my mom. I go, can I have my phone? I need to tell Lauren I'm not going to be at school tomorrow. And she was like, that's what you're concerned about right now. Whose texts you aren't replying to. I was like, <laughs> I was like. 14 year old girl right there. You know what? It's just <laughs> got to do what you got to do, honestly. But, no, it was – and then they did my laminectomy surgery, which is basically where – you know how, like, your spinal cord, like, your spinal column has, like, those little, like, knobs on it? Like, whenever you, like, touch somebody's spinal column, it's, like, bumpy. So that that's, like, the individual like little, bones all yeah. connected individually. Okay. Yeah. I don't have those between here and here. What's connecting your spinal cord? Well, like, then? the spinal column is still there. It's just, like, open. So, it, like... There's nothing to replace it? No metal? No There's, like, well, technology. it's still... It's still, like, the column. It's just the little, like, parts that protect your spinal cord. Uh -huh. Like, my spinal cord's, like, resting in there. Like, peas in a pod. It's resting in there, but, like... Uh -huh. Somebody, like, took a knife and just, like... They... It hit my spinal cord pretty fast. Oh, wow. Can you feel it? Feel what? Can you, like, physically feel it if you were to, like... Well, rub? no, but, like, if you, if you like, touch it, uh -huh. there's, like, 
nothing and then you like hit like right between c7 and t1 which is right about here oh let me find it here right between cervical seven and thoracic one Mm -hmm. you start to feel like the little bumps again but fusing my neck i wouldn't be able to turn my head like i can kind of turn my head like an owl i can tuck my chin behind my shoulder without moving my shoulder but i'm not supposed to you don't have to but could could you do it do you want to see it i would love to see it okay it's actually pretty cool so oh wow i don't have a blind spot when i drive it's great yeah yeah i can't yeah like if you tuck it like behind just like right like the tip of your like i can get i can get like the the closer sided chin just to the the top get, of my shoulder bone. I can get right about here uh-huh. to about here. The 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 further side. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no blind spot when I drive. It's the best. Wow. I also have a blind spot mirror, so like don't have to worry about it. But it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's like a party trick. <laughs> and I'll do that, and my mom's like, "Grace Elizabeth, stop it." I'm like, it's like one of the only cool things I can do. She goes, Papa Wheelie, that's cool. And I was like, I so <laughs> old though. But no, so I had that. That's funny. And then I actually ended up having a massive spinal fluid leak that caused a subdural brain hemorrhage. Mm. So basically I had like spinal fluid coming out of my, because there's like, so, like, how your spinal system works, my understanding of it is, okay, so picture jello. And then there's broccoli in the middle of the jello. There's, like, one just stalk of broccoli. That's your spinal cord. The jello is your spinal fluid. And if you put the jello in Tupperware, the Tupperware is your, like, the bone. So, like, basically, it was, like, scooping all the jello out. And it was like out here. So it was like all the way out on each side of my neck, about two inches. And then it was out three inches on the back. Like out of your skin. Like my skin was covering it, but I basically just had like, it looked like my just neck was oh. swollen. Because it was all spinal fluid. And since it was so close to the top, it started taking fluid that balances your brain instead. Uh-huh. So my brain just kind of went tilt. And like it just kind of. So, like, the whole left side dropped into the bottom. So, that's, like, about a month I so don't do remember. You, wait, it, are these, like, permanent damages to mm-hmm. your to your brain? or? No, I got really lucky and didn't have, like, any permanent brain damage. Uh-huh. The only things I had to reteach myself how to do was basically repetition to create n- new nerve pathways. I always, like, I knew how to lift my head. I just couldn't do it it was like my brain telling my head like lift and wouldn't it do was it way execute. no so you had to cre- keep creating new nerve pathways mm. it's like a roadblock and finding detours oh so you had to figure you had to think it through not even think it through it's repetition and basically keep telling your body the same thing over and over and until over it and finally over, does until it. it finally does it and then you have to keep practicing and keep building so that's also like building muscle too uh-huh. So, like, whenever you work out, you do repetition to build muscle. It's the same thing to build new nerve pathways. And that is is the science lesson. Something as simple as just lifting up your neck? Yeah, I literally, it was like if I closed my eyes, all I could feel was my head. Like, my head on a pillow, like, laid back. Mm -hmm. I would not feel anything on my body. It was like my body wasn't there. It was literally a floating head. I feel like detachment from your body completely yeah and like was it was that? it was even weirder like when somebody would like touch me and i'm like no nope. did you so did you have to teach yourself how to holy shit you like almost you almost experienced like full paralyzed body yeah i was paralyzed like nose down it's so, like i could blink so then but you... i couldn't talk i couldn't like my breathing was garbage so i've never even had the experience of like sleep paralysis and i could imagine that as temporary as it would be to be frightening like fucking scary like telling and your like telling yourself like okay you need to get up and move uh-huh you just can't you can't 
oh, you just can't. Like, just I literally laid on my garage floor. I was like, get would up. You, did you start with anything, like, like more tedious or, like, uh, not tedious, more trivial? Like, like lifting no. a finger? You oh, went like, straight oh, forward? Oh, did or? I start? No. The one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to move my thumb so I could start texting for myself again instead of having my <sighs> mom do it. You fucking millennial. Shoulder <laughs> shrug. But... No, that was like, that was it. I was sick of having my mom text for me. I hated oh, it. I hate that too. So it was like my hands were like, your fingers atrophy. So my hands were like this. So my mom would put my phone in my hand and I could, it took me 20 minutes to send a text message sometimes, but oh, I could wow. left thumb. And then I went, okay, let's get like the rest of my left fingers to work so I can hold my phone instead of just having it balanced there. Were you still able to communicate effectively? Like, could you still move your jaw and your like tongue? Like, I could talk, yeah. Okay. Not great, but I, I'd run out of breath really fast, but I could. Was that due to the asthma? Uh, that's, well, eh, yeah, kind of. And, like, your diaphragm is a muscle, mm-hmm. which, like, nobody understands. Your diaphragm is a muscle. Well, not nobody. People who do, like, singing professionally or, like, that kind of stuff. They understand. So, like your diaphragm, it's how you push the sound out of your vocal cords. If you don't have, if it's diminished, it's harder to talk and it's harder to be long-winded and like do things. And like, I don't know. Some people say yes to this and some people say no. My mom said that my voice changed completely after. And then it's more like, gravelly than it used to be but I asked one of my friends about it and I was like and she's known me since we were four I was like is it more gravelly than it used to be and she was like no what do you mean by gravelly like that's just the adjective okay. in my brain I don't know like Maybe like rougher yeah okay there you go Probably. like raspy yeah okay I'll go with that interesting interesting that's wild. I couldn't imagine having to teach myself how to do like simple basic tasks. things, like super simple things, like like writing, writing, like pick up a pencil and write something. Did you have to reteach yourself these things, or did you just have to teach your mind to tell, like, to teach your mind to tell yourself to actually do it and then execute on those commands? The second one, really? Yeah, but it was really weird because my injury was on my right side, mm-hmm. so my right side's more affected than my left. Okay. So I'm actually now, I'm ambidextrous. I can write with both hands. Wow. Because when I had my spinal cord injury, I had to reteach myself how to write because I was still doing school. Mm-hmm. I never stopped. This happened during the school year? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Like my freshman year of high school. Wow. So like when I was in the hospital in Springfield, like until like mid-March, I of course wasn't doing school. Then I hit St. Louis. I got a lot better. I got my spinal fluid leak figured out. I got all my blood clots figured out. And I immediately started catching up. Mm -hmm. So I was like, they were like, you're probably going to have to graduate a year later. No. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, right. So I never fell behind. So that was kind of cool. How did this impact your personality? Because I think you're, uh, don't take this in a bad way. This is not a bad thing by any any stretch of the imagination. But I find you to, I don't know if, I don't know if disagreeable is a good word to be, but it, it, disagreeable in the sense that you know what you want and you're very stubborn about getting it and honestly if i could think that's anything it's probably a compliment because i think a lot of women are so overly agreeable and like with compassion and intentions but they it comes with the flaw of being so passive that they they can't identify what they actually want so and again i think this is something that i actually really like about myself so that's high praise of anything um but do you think do you think this like made you more stubborn to where you're like okay like there's this very big roadblock in my way but like nothing's gonna stand in my way like I'm going to do what I want to do I've always been like that do you think this like my amplified that entire life well n- or is it just your personality <laughs> like manifesting no, it's... itself with the biggest roadblock you've ever seen yeah pretty much it was kind of just like kind of like twat up and do it. Mm-hmm. That's basic. I mean, I do that with like little twat things. up, twat up, and do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, even with like little things, like get out of bed to go work out, I'll be like twat up and do it. Mm-hmm. Or 
if it's to do something that's like physical therapy that I really don't fucking want to do. I'm like, you know what? This is healthy for you. This is good for you. This is going to be good for you in the long run. Do it. Twat up and do it. Twat up and do it. I've it's never like, heard that before. I love that. <laughs> well, I mean, that's just, yeah, that's what I say. That's awesome. That's awesome. But I know, um, I know like other girls that say that because we're like nut up and do it. Um, like, that's stupid. Yeah, I agree. That's, I don't know. I, I don't like and when it's girls are like, suck my dick. Like, it's like, eh, I don't know how I feel about you saying that. Not that there should be a double standard, but like biologically you don't have the means to do so and like <laughs> it also just sounds like a really like masculine thing to say i don't know like whenever whenever girls are like suck my dick i'm like mm. yeah, i don't know it just makes me a little uncomfortable i don't know like the go to with most girls i'm friends with is like okay one thing that i say and it's like it's so fucking stupid i'm uh-huh. like i know it's done i'll say eat pant eat pant eat pant what does that mean? It's like, you know, like eat my shorts, mm-hmm. eat pant. It's just different. It's just no, dumb. Eat, eat my pant leg. Eat my pant leg. Suck on my jeans. I also have used consume denim. Consumed. I like that one. I consumed like that. Consume denim. It makes you sound like more uh, prestigious. But no, if my friend says something like. What? Somebody says something to me, I'll either be like, ha fuck you, or eat my ass is a go-to. Suck my ass. Yeah, that's another one, too. I don't know I don't know what my go-to is. I think I just say fuck off. I mean, I feel like that's, yeah. It's probably my go-to. What do you feel about the C word? I don't care that much. I don't see anything wrong with it, either. I'm kind of like, like, I know it offends people, so I don't use it. (laughs) Actually, if somebody says that to me, I'll be like, really? What caused the severity of this? Why did I make you feel (laughs) that way? Because I, like, know it's such, like, a socially severe term. It's like bitch times two. Up, up it. Up it more than that. Okay, if a guy says it. To, I feel like it doesn't bother me, but I can like if a guy says it to or about a girl, it's way more socially unacceptable than if a girl says it about a girl. I feel like if a girl says it about a girl, you're like, damn, she's really mad. Uh huh. Like, but like, guy, it, like if a guy does it to a girl, it's like, wow, it's just he's super, an asshole. Yeah, it's just super disrespectful. Yeah, like he, no, it's more like you're a dick. Uh huh. But yeah, no, about that, I mean, it doesn't really bother me. I think if a guy said it to me, I'd be like, I'd be like, well, he'd be like, do you talk to your mother like that? No? Fuck off. I like it. I like it. I mean, of course, it depends on the context. I think it's funny whenever guys call guys that, or just using the word, like, objectively, just a general amount to describe, like, a specific individual. I don't think it's funny. It is kind of funny because it's like so socially unacceptable. It's like taboo that's what to I like about it. it. I think that's what I like. That's about like it. your personality, though. And it's not like it's not like the N word. It's not like racist. You know? No, yeah, I agree. It's like pushing boundaries. I think that's what I like about it. It's like it's like nothing again. I don't know. I feel like if somebody calls me that, I'm gonna be like, okay. If a dude, well, like. I'd wonder why why I'm like why that's like such a that's such a severe term mm-hmm. why but no it doesn't really bother me I'm not the type of person that like it's not offensive to a group in my opinion so like like you were talking about like that kind of stuff like the n-word like that is offensive to a group of people and it is a derogatory term Mm -hmm. the c-word is not a derogatory like it's not derogatory to a group of people in my opinion i don't know there are there are girls who will very much dislike one of my best friends would totally disagree with me 
she would say like it's an anti-feminist term and it's derogatory to women and it's derogatory to the oppression that women have faced and like me I'm just kind of like I feel like it's just a mean word you can call any anybody but like women just tend to get more offended with it I mean yeah I don't know I don't understand why why it became like like the semantics of it became such like a Okay. So taboo. But I don't get, understand that. Why but, is it such? Why is it like the worst word you can use? I don't. Even, I feel like most people don't. They just understand like how how intense it is and how mean. And, I mean, it's like feisty. A, it's it can one be one syllable. Yeah. Like fuck is one syllable. All the meanest cuss words, bitch. One syllable. Shit. Ass. Tits. Most like most cuss words are one syllable. Yeah. It's why my mom, whenever I would curse, she'd be like, "You're so uneducated. Use a multisyllabic word." My parents would say the same thing. They they wouldn't say they wouldn't reference syllables, but they'd be like, "Come on, you're smarter than that. You're no. better than that. You can come." My up with mom would better. say, "Use a multi-syllabic word," and I went, "Motherfucker!" <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, "Touche." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think cuss words add emphasis, though. They do. It's like I'm not saying it because I can't think of anything else. I can think of other words. It's like I want to put emphasis on what I'm saying. Like, okay, if I was going, if you were going to be like. Whatever. I don't know. If I was trying to add emphasis on the point that I don't care, if I said, I don't care, versus like, I was like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. It's just, there's like, there's just more. There's even there. vocal inflection, too. But like, mm. okay. Because you can about emphasize this. fuck. Like, you, you say, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you yeah, know, there just you go. top off that, that cuss word. But like, think about, okay, like, even with. Language and linguistics, like, period. Think about this. Who decided that these random things that you do with your tongue mm -hmm. inside your mouth, the noise your vocal cords make, mm -hmm. and how all of this rolls together, what that means to a person, and how it invokes feeling. Who the fuck decided that? Wait, like, explain this one more time. Like... language uh -huh. like who decided that this this is english this is what it sounds like you say this it invokes this f feeling or response from you I, it, it would have to be a collective effort there's no yeah like person. i just i just wish i could like be like a fly on the wall for like the first people who invented language yeah how right? dope would that be that would be insane like to watch how they like trial and error decided things and like how they decided that this vocal inflection meant you were asking a question and how they decided what a question was and how they decided, like, what this word meant. Because, like, also with the evolution of language, mm -hmm. and, like, what different things mean, which I can't think of an example off the top of my head of how a word has... I mean, I feel like even the word fuck has been evolutionized. So yeah. much it because it's be. so much more socially acceptable even than it was like 40, 50 years ago. Yeah, right. Like people just didn't say it in casual conversation. Mm -hmm. Like fuck might be solely just to have sex and then it becomes taboo. And it's like even people who like. I fucked up. I don't give a fuck. Uh, fuck you. Yeah. Let's fuck. And how it has like all these different connotations and how it evolved from. Maybe just, like, something you say when you stub your toe. Yeah, yeah. Or it adds emphasis. I don't fucking care. Yeah. Um, let's like, go I to can the, think. Let's go to the fucking store. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the fucking discount store. <laughs> <laughs> let's drink some fucking water. Yeah. It, like, adds a ton of emphasis to shit. But how do you think... I, I feel like you would have to... It would be like a, a an agreement process. So like if you point at that and it were to be like chair. Yeah, like how'd they come up with that? Like you point at that and you're like chair. I bet that's how language developed. And somebody disagreed and they broke off with other people who agreed. And then they just moved into different regions. Oh, yeah. Wow. Do you think it all developed at one spot and then it broke off into different regions and then it just went different directions with it? or? In the words, oh my gosh, I can't think of it. In the words of Lil Dicky, do she fuck with Pangea? Like, I mean, so I guess it all technically started uh, in the same place because oh, there's you like said, do Pan she fuck with Pangea? Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. I thought you said 
douchey, douchey. Oh no! Like, okay, I'm following. Like, yeah, because that what the because there's like Pangea, right? That's, that's like all of the continents being like thrown one together. thing. Okay, yeah, before they kind of like broke apart and shifted. And I mean, I'm sure that's how. I'm sure it all started in one place together. If you're like taking. Well, I mean, I don't know. I feel like with evolution, there are different species that lived in different climates. That would climates. have been millions of years ago, though. Oh, yes. 100%. I believe there's, like, probably different species that lived in different places and lived in different climates, and then they formed their own dialect that made sense to them, which, like, who can explain why things make sense? This is, like, a, this is a question worth Googling. How old is language? I'm going to Google it. Because I know, I know, like, what, what are the, what are the most recent forms of, of, I mean, because there are different levels of communication as well, like, like, non-verbally, I mean, their chimps are going to be able to communicate to some degree, dolphins communicate in their own way, but at what point was language itself, like, like, verbal communication? Okay, genetic evidence for early modern human, humans points to our sp- points to the species of early modern human being around 200,000 years old. Moreover, from around 50,000 years ago, the period referred to by archaeologists as Upper Paleolithic, an unprecedented cultural explosion began to manifest itself in human communities. So, like, I guess what we would consider language 50,000 years ago. So, like, more recent than we thought. Because, like, I think people, like, before Upper Paleolithic and stuff like that probably communicated with hand gestures. Because, like, you... I've seen people teach their kids sign language before their child can become verbal. So their child can still communicate their needs. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that's how earlier, like, forms of a homo sapien... uh, Homo sapien. Yeah, that's the word. Communicated. Mm-hmm. So they probably communicated with hand gestures, but what we consider to be modern verbal language considered fifty thousand years ago. And maybe even tone. Like I bet if you if if you were an ape, if you were a chimpanzee, <laughs> if you were a bonobo, like you What is a bonobo? Bonobos are actually a lot more similar to us than uh than chimps are. Are they still like around? Yeah, absolutely. Where? I've never seen that in the city. They've resolved everything with sex. They're like the most sexual creature. They like like conflict, anything. They will fuck anything. Guys, girls, nothing. Like, like it does not so matter. Like, the only rule is that older that the the mother does not fuck the son. It's the only rule. So I'm gonna say I don't. I, maybe maybe the does that mean the father fucks the daughter? Double standard since the beginning of. <laughs> fuck you. <That's> funny. <laughs> No, um, that's hilarious. Wow. But, okay. I'm gonna, you, okay, I'm going to look into that bonobo thing more because I've never heard of that and I'm interested now. Yeah, right? It's, uh, yeah, they're really interesting. They they kind of, uh, there's a lot of, like, theoretical interpretations of bonobos and their behavioral patterns that God, the more to, you fucking know. That kind of explain, like, modern human sexuality and, like, sexual behavior. How did you behavior. figure out about that? I read a book called Sex at Dawn. I read like the first hundred pages of it. Okay, that's pretty fair. But it's it's really interesting. Like the whole evolution of like humanity. We had to read this book my sophomore year of high school. And I didn't read it. As most people do with most of books through high school and college or any book somebody says. Most of the books suck. They suck. Now that I look back at it, it would be a cool thing to read. It's just really hard to read, and I don't have the stamina to do it right now. But it's called Guns, Germs, and Steel. I've heard great things about that book. I've I've seen um I've seen the documentary based on that in my geology class, and it was fucking awesome. Yeah, we had to read that my sophomore year of high school for my AP World History class. Interesting. That was also really fun because we had to write a ten-page research paper on any topic that was not to do with U.S. history, because you couldn't do it on U.S. history, but you could do it on literally any anything else, any country in the world. Mm-hmm. I chose the evolution of the wedding dress from Egypt to TLC's Say Yes to the Dress. I did that timeline. 
Wow, that's interesting. It was a fun time. I really you liked it. You probably learned a lot about the ritual of marriage. Oh, I know so much about... Wh- like, for somebody who never, ever, ever wants to get married, I know way more about weddings than I'll ever need to. Really? Weddings, dresses, how to plan a wedding, all of that. Like, I'll know more than I'll ever need to. It's like, anybody with your wedding plan. What were the needs? ancient Egyptians like? What was their ritual? I mean dowry of course which is like we think your daughter's worth this and you counter and the father counters back and says i think she's worth this and then you go okay here's where we meet in the middle and you buy a human being interesting okay that's how a lot of ancient cultures started even like if you go all the way back to like i didn't put this in my paper but i remember it you go all the way back to caveman it's like to assert dominance with like different clans You'd go and you'd kidnap who you wanted out of the other clan. And then, like, if you like lost... Like, sexually? No. Like, you'd go and kidnap her. And if you tried to fight and you did not kill the person who was coming to kidnap your daughter, you had to give your daughter to this other clan. It was like, oh, well, fuck me, I guess. That's crazy. Yeah, that's how ancient relationships started. Isn't that cute? It's adorable. It's adorable. Love it. I love how they were ambitious enough to spread their genes outside of their own little tribe. Well, I mean, I wonder if they understood what incest was or they were just like, I'm bored. Probably I'm bored. Probably I'm bored, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that goes to like, just like how dudes are. Dudes are like inherently primally competitive. Mm-hmm. I was just, and I'm not saying every dude is like gonna roid out and get competitive. We have evolutionized, mm-hmm. just like not every girl is passive and would just sit there and be like, "Well, I've been kidnapped, fuck me." But like, I don't see. Know. I feel like women and men are just differently competitive. The competitive. Ooh, women. explain. I feel like the hierarchy of males is. More about status and asserting dominance and competence versus women. It's a lot more sporadic. It's a lot more clawing your way to the top. It's not as cohesive. Like men, it's it's more of like a mutual agreement of, okay, he's like the top dog and he's in charge as far as this goes and the subordinates kind of take their place. But I it, like I in in like a dominatory factor like like a, in a dominance dispute that's not a sustainable model or strategy to be able to kind of uh, find your way at the top. But it's more of a I feel like conquest it's... of competency at this point in human history. Oh, what my my opinion is it direct versus indirect, hundred percent. What do you mean? Guys are direct, women are indirect. Yes, but what do you mean by that? But, like, like as far as asserting any kind of dominance or, like, working your way up any kind of social ladder. But do you think do you think women are a lot more direct with, like, who they want? So, like, let's say, for example, like, there is one desirable male and, like, three girls are going out to a party and they, they all want the same guy. Are they going to be, like, are, are they going to be claiming before the party starts, then they all know that this guy's going to be there. Are they going to be, like, claiming him beforehand? Or are they going to be, like, getting there, arriving at the party, and then, like, very indirectly and very subtly kind of going for him? Oh, God. Uh... <laughs> okay, personally, how I would react to that is the drama surrounding that, for me, Ain't no dick worth that. Okay. So I would be like, so I would remove myself from this. I'm the same way. I would just be like, get your rocks off, sis. If you want to have fun with this dude, you go have fun with this dude. It's not meant to be for me right now. It's Mm -hmm. totally fine. Whatever. I don't want the drama with it. Right. But not all girls are like that. Some girls like really thrive on drama. And like, I can admit that drama is fun sometimes. Like, but I, do do I women get that. competitive in that in that aspect? Will they compete over a guy? If I don't know the girl, I'll compete. 
But okay. if I do, I don't care. Okay. If I like, well, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Depends how confident I am. Depends on the situation. Depends on how I feel that day. Uh-huh. If I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I've had my eye on this guy forever. This is my night. I'm feeling hot. I'm going to wait until she's not talking to him and I'm going to go and close the deal. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. But then like, also if he ends up picking her, it's nothing personal. It's just preference at that point, which is fine. I'm just like, whatever. One door closes, three doors open. It's fine. Respect. Bro code. It's like bro code with girl code. That's what it's called. Yeah. Girl code. Girl code. I respect that. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like women and men are a lot more. And for me. They're competitive in different ways. And I get that with the indirect versus direct. For me, I'm not fighting any girl for a dude. I don't Mm -hmm. care if I know her or I don't. I'm just kind of sitting there and I'm I'm like. I'm saying verbally. Verbally, would you? Verbally what? Verbally, would you fight? Like get confrontational. With a girl over sex with a dude. No. <laughs> what about what about more more than sex? Like a okay, relationship. Like, She's you see her as a threat. Like are you are you going to be more indirect and kinda Honestly, I've kind of been in this situation recently. No, because I'm not putting the dude in an uncomfortable situation. If it's a dude that I like actually care about I don't want to introduce drama into his life mm-hmm. if he wants to pick her over me his loss okay. kind of for me that I'm just I'm like, the same way yeah I'm kind of just like if this is who he prefers and this is who he wants to spend his time with that's cool but no I'm not gonna I'm not gonna confront a girl and bring drama into another into somebody's life that I care about like why would I do that so you do, do you think the men are the choosers or the women are the choosers Oh, it completely depends. That I think there's it's the same. There's so many factors that yeah. go into that. Like, how long has it been since the dude has gotten what his objective is? Whether that's a relationship or like just getting laid. Mm-hmm. Like, how long? Then it's kind of a beggars can't be choosers mentality. Okay. And then with girls, if it's kind of a thing like I want to make my ex jealous, and this is my like unending goal. I'll go home with whoever just as long as it's not him. Right. It's like there's so many factors to it. You can't give like, I don't know. It's not black and white. There's too I many. I like that. I like that. That's a it's, really rational explanation. It's like too definitive of an answer. It's not a definitive answer if one is or isn't the chooser. Mm-hmm. Like, and here's my thing. That I, think when, I think with sex, as far as that's concerned, it's mostly the woman choosing. She chooses who she wants to sleep with. I mean, yeah, but that's also because, like, even socially, there's so much, like, there's so, like, socially, there's so much pressure. Not pressure, but, like, women consent, and if a woman doesn't consent, holy shit, that's a big deal. And it's starting, and then, like, it's starting to grow out of this. this You're saying, are are you referring to rape? No. What are you referring to? Like, if a girl's, like... Okay, yeah, I'll go home with you. Uh Uh-huh. I feel like that is, like, if a girl says that, I don't know. I don't know. If a girl, I can't think of where I'm going with this. I lost my train of thought. But, no, I mean, I I think you're right to an extent. Mm Mm-hmm. To an extent. Because, I mean, I I feel like dudes do say no. Mm -hmm. It's not as common, but it happens. But like one thing, I don't know. And I know I'm, a lot of girls don't do this. You heard it here first. I think they should. And you give me your opinion on this because I'm curious. Okay. I see a guy at the bar that I think is like really cute. And I like want to talk to him and I can't think of anything. And he doesn't have a drink. I'll go buy him a drink. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, hey, what are you drinking? Can I buy you a drink? I think you're really cute. I feel like guys would be like, you're buying me a drink? What? Like, I really like this approach and agree with it coming from a male perspective because personally, I find 
there to be a lot of like taboo kind of like wishy-washy rules of I don't want to come on too strong like I, that's like a big goal of mine whenever I go out like yeah. if I'm going to be like flirty I don't want to come on too strong and if I see the girl like kind of making the first move even if it's really passive like really indirect or if it's um really subtle like that's it's like oh that's kind of like the the gateway and then like from there I can kind of make my my move and instead of she's just like waiting around if she's just waiting around there's no way I can tell and then it's just like odds are like if I'm gonna end up making a move or not yeah and then for me it's kind of like that thing where and then again it's like somebody says no preference don't take it personal they don't know you Shut it roll off your back and say, okay, have a good night. Go about your night. I agree. And that's every man's, like, biggest fear is rejection. But you have to get to the point of, like, mm, like rejection's not the end of the world. Let's say you heard it here first. Buy a dude a drink at the bar. I agree. I agree. I think it's, like. Why the hell not? Right? It's, like, a it's like very six, subtle. It's, like, six dollars mm-hmm. max. It's like a subtle first move. Like if you're actually interested, and then and then at that point you're like, you'll figure out if you're interested. Or yeah, not. because then you have instead to t- of sitting around waiting all night. Because then you have to talk to them, and you have to like wait for the drink to get there, and then you can yeah. like get to know them. And then if you don't plus, like, it's so rare that this happens as a guy. Like if I know, would you be like total excited? Asshole, I'd be really excited. And I would talk to that girl for a while. Like I wouldn't just drink the drink and like I wouldn't just take it and leave. Like I would, <coughs> I'd sit there and like. Even if even if like, we did not connect at all, and it was just like, yeah, this girl's kind of weird, then I'd I'd probably like sip my drink and hang out with her for another ten minutes, and then be like, hey, it was really nice talking to you. Thank you so much for this, and then go find my friends. Yeah. Who knows? It, I mean, you just open yourself up to a whole new adventure, and I think, I think some guys are like weird, like they don't want they they have to be the first one to make the move, or they don't like when the girl makes the first move for whatever reason, whatever reason. Me personally. I think if it's like very direct and some like I don't know for example I got this girl at, at work who's like very like huggy like very mm-hmm. all over me like like physically she'll just like grab on and to me and like cling on to me and like rub my arms and uh, I don't know it's like it's like borderline sexual harassment but it's kind of double standard to where I'm like eh like I don't know like it doesn't bother me but if I was doing this shit to a girl oh my god it would definitely be sexual harassment like for sure and um yeah, with that being said, that hour is like, where was I getting at? I feel like I, I'm a little bit hungover today, and I feel like my brain's <laughs> not making as good of points as usual. I feel like it's not working as well. But um, oh, where's I going with that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just feel like I feel like it's cool whenever a girl makes a first move. It's kind of flattering to me. For it's very me, flattering because it's so rare. For me, if a guy can't handle that, I'm like, I'm like, whew. Good luck handling me then. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm a real, I have like, I'm like a strong personality. Like that's just how I am. And what, I don't, I don't get why, why it has to be like a one way street amongst the sexes. Like if you're, if you want to express interest, oh, it regardless so of gender, why does it have to be a double standard? I don't get it. Because that's what's been socially done forever, and it's just breaking that social norm and deciding if that's something you want to do or not. It's more of a social norm than anything, right? Like, it's not like an innate thing as much as it is a socially constructed value. It's not like, like, I I think it's a little bit innate, and that's where the social construct came from, but I think it's more social than anything. Yeah, probably. Because, I mean, I'll do this, like, in front of my friends, and they're like, you're buy him a drink i'm like why the fuck not yeah six dollars i have six dollars it's fine i don't care if you got if you got interest in the person yeah even if even if they just seem like a cool person whatever whatever it may be like i mean i like that i like that philosophy a lot and i i agree if they can't handle that then like (laughs) see ya yeah that's like like it's not like you're like presenting yourself as easy at that point it's not like hey I I I'm going to fuck you tonight, and Here's I'm gonna liquor. start. Yeah, I'm gonna start with this liquor, so that I don't like. I I, I don't know. Like, why why would the guy have a problem with that? I don't, I don't see, know. I see no reason why they should. I've run into guys having a problem with it. Like, okay, so 
got a little thing for you. So, this guy, he had, like, I was, like, talking to. He had had a, like, really shitty day at work the day before. Mm -hmm. And then we went to 4x4 to get flights. So, because they have half price flights on Mondays. And I had known he'd had a shitty day at work, so I just bought his flight for him. And we were about to leave, and he goes, oh, do we need to pay? And I went, no, I got you. It's fine. I was like, you had a, I was like, you had a shitty day at work. You paid the last time we went out. It's on me. No worries. Immediately after that was like, like, basically, like, tried to kind of, like, ghost me, and then I called him on it. I was like, if this is what you're doing, this is stupid. I was like, just talk to me. And he's like, well, I feel like I gave you the wrong impression and I'm not looking for anything serious. I was like, you literally think I'm looking for something serious because I bought your flight and I did something nice for you. I went, no, I'm just doing something nice for you. How much do you pay for it? Like 15 bucks. No, wait, oh. 12. No, no, I had $15 in my that bank account. That is definitely an overreaction. I had $15 in my bank account and I paid 14, but he didn't know that. I was like, I can live with a dollar for like three days. <laughs> like, I got a credit card if anything truly terrible happens. Uh-huh. I was like, and I didn't really think anything of it. I was like, no big deal, whatever. Uh -huh. You're just being True nice. True overreaction. That's but that's also what happens when you date somebody who's emotionally immature and doesn't know how to. It's really interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I was kind of just like, I was just kind of like, again, let it roll off my back. I was like, I was like, if you're going to assume what's going on here. This is just dumb anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And I told my friend about it and she goes, because I was like contemplating if I wanted to do it or not. And she was like, I don't know. Some guys get really weirded out when girls pay. I was like, let's see what kind of guy he is. We're going to figure out which one. I don't, I don't under, that's a, that's a social construct as well. Yeah. But like. My thoughts on that are at this age, like this age, early twenties, everybody's broke. Yeah. Like, everybody's broke. So, like, I don't really see... I think it's really cool whenever it's, like, 50-50. Because that's how our relationship yeah, should be. Like, you know, it's kind of like a financial representation of, like... I don't know. Like, I got your back, you got mine. Hey, like, you remember I bought that movie for you the other few nights ago? I'm not going to ask for it, but if you just go out of your way and... It, like, tonight shows that you, you care. You buy the food. Like, oh, that's so cool of you. It shows you care, and it also shows that you're... You're willing to reciprocate, and it, it kind of creates a really cool culture within that relationship dynamic of, like, hey, like, I do something nice for you, do something nice for me, and not because, like, I'm asking you to, because, like, you just really want to. Like, you went out of your way to help me out, and I really, really appreciate that. Oh, I think, my, my best I think friend cool. and I do that. I think that's really cool, when, regardless of, like, a, any relationship dynamic. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Like, my best friend and I, whenever we go to Alamo, because we see a lot of movies, we're both, like, big movie people, so we'll go see a lot of movies together. If she gets the tickets, I'll pick up food and drinks, and then next time we go, I pick up the tickets, she picks up food and drink, and we just switch off. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And it's really fun, because, like, I did, I actually did that for, like, a date date. I said, I said, hey, I'll buy the tickets. Do you want to pick up drinks while we're there? He was like, I'm going to get, and then basically, like, from there, then you just kind of go off what the other person's getting. I was like, I was like, are you going to get food? And he went, yeah. And I was like, sick, I can get my buffalo cauliflower. So, and that's another thing that I'm kind of just like, like, if you're going to, if somebody's paying for your stuff, or you're, like, if somebody's paying for your stuff, I always want them to order first. I want to see what they're getting, and then I gauge what I'm getting off of that, because I'm mm -hmm. either going to get the same or less. Right. Because I feel like that's just like, that's just like the nice thing to do. It's like the courteous thing to do. I like it. I like it. Like if I go to Taco Bell and this guy's like, I'm going to get a steak quesarito and four loaded grillers. I'm like, sitting there, I'm like, I can get some nacho fries and a griller. I'm like, sick. So I'm like, I can get two things. But if he's like, I'm getting a potato loaded griller. I'd be like, same, good with me. Because, like, in in theory, he's paying. Yeah, in in okay. that in okay. that yeah, yeah. circumstance. Okay, I get you. I get you. Can I match his price? Yeah, it's Absolutely. like you match the person who's paying for the shit. That's what my yeah. parents taught me to do. It's, it's reciprocation. 
because anytime I would go out, like even when I was younger, I would go out to dinner with people's parents. I'd always say, oh, I don't know what I want. I'll order last and I'll see what everybody else is getting. And I then like I gauge it off of that. I like that. So that's what my parents taught me to do. And I it's just like a very collectivist egalitarian way to view it. And that's the, and why not create that? That's the relationship dynamic. I would want at least. I wouldn't want it to be a one way giving street for anybody. I wouldn't want anybody. But the thing is, is if like. I like go out on a date with a dude. I'll go to pay for my stuff. And mm-hmm. if he goes, no, I got it. I say, okay, thank you. I don't like, I'll say, well, it depends. If it's like a first date, I'll be like, oh, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. If it's like a second or a third. I'll say like, are you sure? And then they'll be like, yeah, I got you. And I'm like, okay, thank you. I appreciate it. So you go with that. But then, I don't know. I kind of feel like you can like gauge that shit though. At least I'm really good at gauging that. Mm-hmm. Cause like one of the, like, like, a guy that I'm seeing, he'll go and he'll, like, he paid for, like, a bunch of stuff. And then he had a really shitty day. And I was like, okay, drinks on me tonight. Right. And I even, like, I got the bill and he goes, he was like, are you sure you don't want me to pay for it? He was like, that ended up being way more expensive than I thought it was going to be. I was like, don't worry about it. I was like, it's fine. I got it. I was internally freaking out, but I was like, well, <laughs> I was like, I got it. And it kind of, I feel like it all goes back to like the male being the provider. But <laughs> at this point in time, people are tr- testing each other out, figuring out it's what like, they like. It's like, who the fuck cares? Yeah, I don't, I don't get why it matters so much at this point in time. That's like later on, if like that guy wants to play the provider role, then it dep- for me, it's who makes the most money. If you're, you have two partners who one person makes seventy k a year and one person makes thirty k a year. Mm-hmm. Person who makes seventy k a year probably gonna pay your rent the person who makes 30k a year probably gonna pay for fast food and a lot of guys would like be really proportional down on themselves spending if the girl sp- if the girl makes more the guy would get down on himself oh and who the fuck cares as long as it's a an equal mutual relationship as long as everything is like agreed upon who cares like i don't know i i could see myself in a way like feeling a little a little lesser or like or feel like i have less value to her but if at the end of the day, as long as she like, as long as it's like a, you know, like a that would a make healthy me, relationship dynamic, and you guys really care about each other, then that would make me want to work harder. Yeah, yeah that would make same. me want to work harder. I'd be not to like match their salary, but to like. I will say I I don't know how I'd respond if it was that much of a difference. If I'm making thirty k a year and they're making seventy, or like all, like one hundred, I'd be like, well, what value am I adding to their life? Like, this, are they gonna care? But if it's, if it, it, in my opinion, if it's like they're making 80 and you're making 70, it's like I'm happy with what I'm making. I'm super happy for myself and I'm super happy for you. Look at us. And Look like at us. I love, and like I like my job. I don't know. Like if I was, if I was going to like, I'd be so happy if I would see where I was five years ago. Like regardless of my wife's making more, who cares? That kind of like, I don't know. For me, that comes from like dating an engineer for a long time. They start out with really good great salaries but they hit a cap pretty quick as to how much they can make a year really like 400k a year absolute max absolute and that's like if you're running like your own company and you're in a major metropolitan city you're making a shit ton of money add in promo there's a lot of different, you can start really low and you can get jacked up really fast. It can get really high. It just kind of depends. And then, and then the fashion industry, oh my God, you can be making nothing or you can be making millions. I can see that. So like, it just kind of depends. Like, yeah, you might start out that way, but then you're going to come to a merge at some point. At least that's what I've. Is, is, as That's as what I've seen with engineering. You're happy with least. your own salary. Like, as long as you're happy with where you are, you're like, yes. Like, if I was a kid, like, looking up and being like, wow, I'm making 80K a year. And if, if, you're, if your significant other is making, like, 150, it's like, wow, I'm, I'm married to a rich person. And... And I'm doing well myself. Like uh, this is a good this is a good thing we got going here. So yeah, like, exactly. why compare yourself? Who cares? Even though that's almost double of what you're making, you're still making a good portion. Yeah. Uh, if you're gonna compare yourself to anybody, compare yourself to somebody who's working at 
McDonald's. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's pick somebody in your job field. Prepare yourself to them and then work yeah. hard to catch up to them. Catch up to them. Find another person. Catch up. Keep yeah. going. And I'm more concerned, are you happy? Like, Are you actually happy doing what you're yeah, doing? Yeah, that's true. Are you passionate about it? I think that's a l- way more important than comparing yourself to your significant other. True. Do you have any other thoughts? I'm down to wrap this up in a little bit if you want. No, I'm down too. Cool. You want to right now? Yeah, sure. Cool. I enjoyed this. Honestly, I got a piss. That's like half the reason. <laughs> so I was like, I honestly, I'll I'll go take a piss and then I'll carry you upstairs. Yeah, good with me. Okay. I just I I love that like you I just want to so just cool. like slide that in at the I, end. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Sweet. Cool. Well, this was fun. You enjoyed this? Yeah, I did. I was like super nervous, and now I'm just kind of like, whatever, it's fine. Yeah, right. Just talking, having just a conversation. Chilling. I was, I was, I'm very hard on myself with this to like where I want to be like the best version of me, and I want to be like charismatic and fun and interesting and funny and all the above. And I, I don't, I like, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm highly critical, and especially whenever I'm in the state of mind that I've been in all day, it, that I've just kind of like mentally exhausted because I was up. I didn't get much sleep last night. I was up too late. I mean, I was same. drinking. So like. All these variables, so like, but I, I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this. I just, I, I will say, I don't, think, I don't think my mind's working as conceptually as it, as it can. But I'm, I'm, I think it was a good conversation, nonetheless. Yeah, but I, we're both pretty go with the flow. We're just kind of like, I agree. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know why I am that way, but I'm just like highly critical of myself. I think everybody is. Like even watching extent. watching some like old podcasts, like I can't even watch it because I say like too much or I do X, Y, and Z too much, and I'm just like critiquing the fuck out of myself like way more than I should. Not in an insecure way. It's just like I want to get better at this. So mm-hmm. feel so, that you know you're just like you're picking yourself apart, and it's like I don't know. You can spend too much time. You can think way too in depth about it. Agreed. I just thought I'd slide there that in there at the end as well. Just a little. Taco Bell, good to go. <laughs> well, cool. Good? Good. Awesome. Yep. This is fun. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. That was fun. <laughs>